I know I promised uh, footage of the test rides and range tests and things like that in this video, but a whole bunch of other stuff happened and I wanted to show that. The next video is going to be all the range tests. I have all the footage, I just need to slap it together. It's my day off, there's a storm outside, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to post this video, then I'm going to get to editing that video. And they should both show up on YouTube within a few hours of each other. Hello! I finished the bike and I took it for a test ride and it works amazingly, super beautifully awesome. One of the things that makes it better than uh, an electric bike with a hub motor, this is a mid-drive, is that I can use the gears and it's pedal assist, so it just sips the battery, it takes those hills away no problem. I took it on a 15 mile ride and it had battery power to spare and this is with a 36 volt 7 amp hour battery. Electric bicycles coming out with the lithium batteries are saying you need a 10 amp hour battery to get a 10 mile range and I went 15 on 7 amp hours of lead acid which is not supposed to be possible. It's pretty amazing. Restore the batteries, get them out of the, the, the dumpster get or you know the recycling bins at hardware stores and electronics stores lead acid batteries they're free they work it's just a 20 pound battery pack which is like all the weight that was on my tushy six months ago it, it's hardly noticeable even when the battery dies eventually you can just pedal it's a normal bike the weight is not that noticeable because you've still got full use of all the gears the motor isn't that heavy, it doesn't add a lot of weight to the bike, it's amazing. I'm so happy I did this. You don't need a hub motor, they're overrated, they don't have enough torque to go up hills, and they don't drive the bike at the transmission, which I think is important to have. This is me making up for not showing you how this thing was wired together. All right, so I've got the battery bag. It's a shoulder bag, so if I want to, I can take it off the bike and wear it over my shoulder and carry it into class or work or what have you. I've got a plastic tray with a little piece of towel duct taped inside just in case the batteries leak. And here's the power cord. It's an extension cord, which plugs into the power cord on the motor. And then this is another wire coming out of the motor goes to the main wiring harness, which is four wires that snake up to the electrical cutoffs for the brakes, the display, the throttle. So it's super simple. All you have to do is zip tie it to the frame and you can see it's very neat, very orderly, nothing's hanging. In fact, at first glance, it doesn't even look like an electric bicycle. Pretty cool. Now, another thing I wanna show you <laughs> but that's the reflector it came off of the back here because the screw didn't have a thread locker on it this is the speed sensor and it detects this magnet every time the magnet passes it picks up and you get it you get to set the display computer uh, for the diameter of the wheel and it does some math and it tells you the speed so the battery just drops right in here Zip it up, plug it in, and I'm ready to go. This big side pocket here is big enough to carry the charger. I can take the charger to work with me, and that's been working out pretty well. These are the crotch-mounted saddlebags. Uh, I keep my lock in here. This is the little pocket where my cell phone can go, so I can use the GPS, and the touchscreen works through this plastic here. This is for power on. This increases the level of pedal assist. This decreases the level of pedal assist. And this is the throttle right here. So I have good access to my brakes, my gears, and my throttle. And it's very comfortable to ride. Uh, I haven't had any real problems except for the pedal ripping off. And you can see I have new crank arms on here now. And I'll tell you more about that later. 
Everything is performing beautifully, and I'm super happy with this guy. Well, I just got back home from work, <clears throat> and about halfway home, the pedal fell off. I must have threaded the pedal in wrong, and it ripped through the threads on the crank arm, so I gotta replace the crank arms and get new pedals. But yeah, I had enough juice to get me home without pedaling, which was pretty cool. So I just took off the crank arms. You can see how torn up that is. The problem is that if you look here, you can see a letter L by the hole on top. And then here's the other one. And you can see a letter R. Left hand side, right hand side. The thing you gotta do is put them on the right side of the bike. I had them on the wrong side of the bike. Now I gotta find a replacement set of crank arms, only uh, drive side and non-drive side are very different in mountain bikes. I think these are unicycle crank arms. I've seen YouTube videos of people using regular crank arms and grinding the splines off of the drive side. I think I might try that. I found replacement crank arms. For the drive side, I had to get a crank arm that looks like this. And I could have ground off these splines, but it seemed to fit okay just like this. They're just not connected to anything. But they have enough clearance that they don't hit the chain guard. Um, and the other side is just a standard crank arm. And the cheap pedals from Target and this is a better setup than it came with. So I'm happy everything's installed properly this time and now this bike can start getting some serious use. In my research, I've also learned that a set of unicycle crank arms will fit this kit really well. I went ahead and just went to a bike shop and got used cranks. Uh, thanks for watching this. I encourage you to make some comments and show me where I'm screwing up. Uh, this has been really fun and I hope that this inspires some people to try to do this because it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to get good results. Uh, that's, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace, love, waffles.